Last year, there were nearly five million victims of automobile accidents. But there were many more victims of, not accidents, but vetoes. Look close, because you're here too. something about accidents. But cut the figure down. Who knows? But for damn sure, we can cut out completely the number of victims of veto. We can elect this year a veto-proof Congress. A veto is when the president tells Congress he won't sign a bill. It takes a two-thirds vote of the Congress to reverse the president's veto, to tell the president to go jump in the lake. Let's start with the minimum wage bill. Way back in 1938, we got 25 cents an hour. 48 hours a week, $12. But we didn't care. We wanted to get it on the books. But you know what they said? An invasion of government. Inflation. Socialism. Communism. Fascism. Dangerous power in the hands of government all for $12 a week. We can better stand the cost in higher prices than we can stand a complete relapse to a fascist regimentation of every individual in the United States. But we had the muscle and a great president, and we passed it, and he signed it into law. Last year, we wanted to bring the minimum wage bill up to date again, to raise the minimum wage from $1.60 to $2 on November 1st and $2.20 eight months later. And we passed it by 287 to 130 votes in the House and 64 to 33 votes in the Senate. But you know what he said? The difficulty is that the minimum wage bill, which is presently before me on my desk, would raise the minimum wage by 38 percent. It would deny employment opportunities to unskilled and younger workers who at present are in the highest numbers and the highest percentage of unemployment. It would increase unemployment and it would give an enormous boost to inflation. If inflation means that uh, he's going to veto uh, the minimum wage law, that means my family will be hungry and cold. This is inflation against hunger. I don't see where that makes any sense to me. And when we tried to get it past President Nixon's veto, in spite of everything we could do, we failed. We were 23 votes short. How many victims of the veto? As a starter, how does three and a half million sound? raise them to the poverty level, and they would increase the nation's wage bill. You know how much? By about one half of one percent in two years. But oh no, dangerous to the national interest. Inflationary. Be careful, you'll make the enemies list at the White House. We need new senators, we need new congressmen that are going to help the little man and not look out for themselves and feather their own nests and forget about the poor and the old. Look at your morning papers. The consumer price index, a rise of one-tenth of one percent, that rise was the lowest in four years. And so it was worth doing. It sounded good, but...
and energy. Put two and two together. The oil industry people contributed nearly $5 million to the $60 million presidential campaign in 1972. You and I pay 50 or 60 cents a gallon or more for gasoline. We pay twice as much or more to keep our family warm through the winter each week, and hundreds of thousands of us lose our jobs to boot. Does that add up? Oh, Nixon didn't veto anything, but he sure stalled for a couple of years while people like Senator Jackson warned him what was coming. Victims of the veto? <laughs> you bet we are. Let's take old people. And look, fella, the person who isn't getting older every day hasn't yet been invented. You get out of bed, uh, any bed, and your bones creak a little more each day. It's a little harder each day. And don't tell me how young you are. You're one day older than you were yesterday, and so is every person you know. So? So this. We passed an Older Americans Act. We work to give older people a break in other programs. President Nixon couldn't get away with turning down the Social Security increase completely. Just uh, hold it up for six months, then brag like hell. But an Older Americans Act, uh-uh. And a break for old people and other programs, no way. I live alone, I'm 76 years old the other day, and I still can't figure out how in the hell I'm gonna get along. I have to depend on friends feeding me once in a while. How many veto victims? Well, start with nearly a million people over 50 who had a chance to get public service jobs. Add some more people over 50 who don't get the benefits of senior citizen centers. You can take it from there. You a veteran? Handicapped? Need medical care? Want to go to college? No way, buddy. Not with this president. Not until this year's congressional elections. You better well believe the veterans are getting a lousy deal. Definitely. This veto, it only hurts the veterans. They went, got shot up, banged up, back here now. And uh, you mean to say we can't get medical aid? Of course we're the victims. And we are not happy about it at all. You think the government gives a damn about us working men? They don't care. Everything is geared for strictly to management. They make the profits, they got you on minimum wages, they veto all the bills that's out here to help us, and then they expect you to make a living out of this minimum wage. Let them try for a while. Let them come out here. Let them get their guts full of it. You can work 20 hours a day here, and what they make in a half hour's time is more than we can make in a week's time. And yet they turn around and they veto all the bills that's out here to help the man to get along. It helped the big business people. Their profits soared. Yet, the working man making a low wage could not afford the prices, along with the Watergate and other things. I think it's about time Nixon give up. Just don't know where it's going to lead us, but I think something has to be done. It's everybody's PO'd about this, and something should be done, done now. I don't think we should be waiting for three years. If ever a man should get out of office, he's the one now. Anybody would be better than him now. Well, no point in running down the list. By the time we got to the bottom, we'd have to start all over. Put it this way. Every time a bill comes up to help business, Nixon says yes. But people, no. I guess it's just that they like to push people around. <laughs> I think the president should try living off a dollar sixty-five an hour or so. I'm not middle America. I'm forgotten America. I think this country needs a big change in the administration of Washington. Nobody gives a damn for the working man anymore. I think all they're looking out is for the big oil companies. They're not looking out for the little man at all. We can't get jobs, job uh, opportunity programs are being cut. Uh, educational assistance is being cut or did away with. So how do you think we feel? I'm just hot. 
behind. At the administration, I can't see why our senators and congressmen can't do something over his vetoes. So what do we do about it? The most important thing is to give a damn. Cope is us. These United States are our country. What happens to our country means what happens to all of us. Right now, our job is to elect a Congress that's veto-proof, to stop piling up more victims of the veto. In the House, we've got, give or take a few, about 240 friends. That means we have to hold on to what we have and add 23 or more seats if we're going to elect a veto-proof House. And in the Senate, again, give or take a few, we've got about 56 friends. That means we have to hold on to what we have and elect seven more. So it's seven in the Senate and 23 in the House. That's what we have to get this year for a veto-proof Congress. We'll get the thanks of people whose lives are going to be better. Little people, big people, old people, young people, white, yellow, red, black people. People like us who have been victims of the veto. The film you've just seen lays it on the line. Our goal in 1974 is to elect a veto-proof Congress. As long as President Nixon occupies the White House, the only way to get the legislation Americans need is to have the votes to override presidential vetoes. In the past few years, the American people have witnessed the most ruthless use of presidential veto power in history. Virtually every presidential veto has struck down a program to benefit the vast majority of the American people. Workers have been hurt by vetoes. The poor have been hurt. Older Americans have been hurt. Young Americans have been hurt. But the Congress lacks the votes to override President Nixon's vetoes because he needs only one third plus one of either the House or the Senate to sustain his vetoes. President Nixon can kill legislation benefiting the people. And as we have seen, he has demonstrated that he will use the veto again and again and again against the people. Now we know that you don't get anything by waving a magic wand. You don't get it by wanting, and you don't get it by wishing. You get it by working, and that's what we have to do this year to elect a veto-proof Congress. We have to work longer, harder, and in greater numbers than ever before. We have to work harder at registration. Our goal must be to register every union member and every voting age member of his or her family. We have to work harder at educating union members on the issues and the records of the candidates. Our goal must be the best informed membership we've ever had. And we have to work harder at collecting vital dollars for COPE to help candidates who put people first. The American people have seen how huge contributions from rich individuals and large corporations can corrupt politics. The only antidote is small contributions from the many. Our goal must be $2 for COPE from every union member. Finally, we have to work hard at getting out the vote on election day. Our goal, every worker a voter, every voting age member of his or her family a voter. We've undertaken each of these responsibilities before. They are not new to us, but this year we'll have to just do them a little better. Anyone who has seen union members in action in elections knows that when we're geared up, when we're motivated, when we know that what we are doing is for the nation's good, as well as for members, workers, and consumers, politically, we can move mountains. The challenge this year is to neutralize the Nixon veto power. We must elect a veto-proof Congress to assure that average Americans will no longer be veto victims. It won't be easy. It will take hard work. But I'm convinced that union members working together can elect a veto-proof Congress in 1974. When we do that, all America will benefit.